St. John family. It's Willie here, and I'm excited to welcome you to our online worship experience. Thank you for turning in as we worship God together. We believe today's service will be a blessing to you, so do me a favor and share this service with someone. You never know who's waiting to hear a word from God. We also want to know where you're watching from. Drop your city, state, and country in the chat and comments. Well, all right, worship has begun, so let's jump into the sanctuary and join the service. church amen since God has been so good to us you ought to say amen again you do know that he's worthy to be praised let me say it again he's worthy to be praised we thank you for worshiping with us today, you who are listening by way of social media, we thank you. We pray that you let go and let God have his way. If you have your Bibles, please stand, turn to Isaiah chapter 53. 
let us look at and read verses 1 through 5. It reads, Who has believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him a tender plant and as a root and of the dry ground. He has no form nor comeliness, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty, so we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, and we hid it as it were our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he had borne our grief and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquity, and the chastisement of his peace is upon him, and with his strength we are healed. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, Lord of the universe, we pause to say thank you. Lord, we know you are worthy. You woke us up early this morning, you clothed us in our right mind. Oh, Lord God, you are a good God. Beside thee, there is none other. Lord, we love you because you first loved us. Oh, great God Almighty, we need you. We need you right now. Lord, we face difficulties. We have faced uncertainties. We have faced news that were baffling within our minds. But Lord, we heard that quiet, still voice of yours saying, don't worry, I got it all in control. Oh, you are God. And we love you today and we say hallelujah. Hallelujah because you're God. Oh, Lord God, we Thank you for so much. We can name it all, Lord. We, we, we thank you for health and thank you for strength and thank you for our right minds and thank you for motivation and thank you for self-denomination. And Lord, we just say thank you. Oh, Lord. Oh, we thank you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We magnify you, Lord. We lift you up. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Lord. We thank you. The Lord, when we must come to the end of this journey, let us look upon dying face. In Jesus' name.
and gentlemen. Uh, scripture John chapter 21, verse 15 through 17, I shall read for you. So when they had eaten breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me more than these? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, feed my lambs. He said to him again a second time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, tend my sheep. He said to him a third time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? Peter was grieved because he said to him the third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Good morning, everybody. Today is Youth Sunday. We, we are so excited to welcome you to worship with us. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Uh, again, you are welcome. Let us pray. Lord God, thank you for bringing us through this week, Father God. Whether you are walking by us or carrying us, Father God, thank you for keeping us last night as we slept, Father God, and waking us up really ready to give you all the praise and the glory, Father God. And I just ask that you would just remove us and reveal yourself to and through us, Father God. Strengthen us. Regulate our minds, purify our hearts, and restore our spirits, Jesus. Bless us in this service and on this day in your presence. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Good morning, St. John. Today we're going to do a little bit of something new, but we're going to bring something old back. Uh, Y'all remember years ago on you Sunday, Daddy used to do a, a message for the children. Well, this Sunday, we're going to bring that back. And so I want to welcome my brother, Reverend Nathaniel Noble, to do the message this morning. Genesis 37 and 5 says, And Joseph had a dream, and he told it to his brothers, and they hated him all the more. They hated him all the more means that it's already been established that they hated him. If we go back a few verses, we see that he was hated because of a coat he was given from his father. Some will translate that Hebrew to mean the coat was a certain color. Others will translate that Hebrew to mean that it was a long sleeve coat and it went down to his ankles. If it was a coat of many colors, then it made him stand out. But if it was a coat that was long sleeve and went down to his ankles, that means when he's in the field, he's not supposed to work. He's the one in charge. So his brothers hated him for what was on the outside. You will find yourselves, young people in that position. People will look at you and decide that based on what they see, that they now have a problem with you. Maybe it's the way you walk. 
Maybe it's the way you talk. Maybe it's just the way you carry yourself. But there's something on the outside that they have decided that they just don't like. In this verse, verse 5, Joseph has a dream. But now they have a second reason for hating him. They not only hate him for what's on the outside, they've now decided that they hate him for what's been placed on the inside. Young people, you'll have that problem too. Maybe you're the type that just makes straight A's. Something's been placed on the inside of you that makes you try harder than the next. They will dislike you for that. Maybe it's the way you think. When you don't think like everyone else, it makes you stand out. You'll find some hate for that as well. Maybe you're just living the life you were taught right here at St. John. You'll find that some people will hate that as well. <laughs> we like to say that opposites attract. But I would be doing you a disservice if I left it at that. Sometimes opposites attract. And then they decide to attack. When they decide they can't be you, be like you, look like you, wear their hair like you, they'll decide that there's something wrong with you. They'll hate what's on the inside. Then they'll find a way to hate what's on the outside, or vice versa. Joseph's brothers decided to sell him into slavery and destroy his coat, take it back to their father, threw blood on it, and gave the impression that he was killed by an animal. They sold a leader into slavery. They destroyed what was on the outside. But when he was sold into slavery, into Egypt, put into a jail, everything on the outside was gone. But what rose him to prominence was what was placed on the inside. They might destroy what's on the outside, but they can't do anything to what's on the inside. I know I'm talking to the youth, but if we were to let the other people in this room in our conversation, I know they're not listening to us, but if we were to let them in, I would say to them at this point that this outside body will let us down sometimes. Our mind is just as sharp as it always been, but our body doesn't do what it used to do. The hips and these bones and knees are replaced by mechanical things, and this body just lets us down. There's nothing we can do about it. Job said it well. Though he slay me on the outside, yet will I trust him on the inside. That's what I would say if I was talking to the other people in this room. But since I'm talking to the youth, what I'll say to you is, keep wearing that coat. Keep being different. Don't let the outside world stop you from being you. Keep dreaming. If you have something that's been placed on the inside of you, it's not for the rest of the world to understand. It's been placed inside of you. A 
achieve what's been placed inside of you. And Joseph had a dream. And he told it to his brothers. And they hated him more. And the youth of St. John had a dream. They worked the steps to make that dream a reality. And their church family was not surprised as what they're able to accomplish. of diseases, people are slipping away, economies down, people can't get enough pay, as for me, all I can say is, thank you Lord for all you've done for me, yeah. thank you Jesus, Ooh, without homes, living out in the streets, and the drug habits some say they just can't beat. Mothers and robbers, no place seems to be safe, but you've been my protection ever since.
Say it one more time. Reverend Manning and I, y'all knew we grew up together. A few months ago, we were in, in uh, Dillon's. Uh, we saw some lions out there, the zoo. And asked what church our friends were, were served at. I told him St. John. And you know his reply. He had the nerve to say, old bougie St. John. But I think that it's more like shouting St. John. Because I don't know if you know, but I got an Apple Watch on. And it's told me three times this service that it's too loud in here. <laughs> so if there's nobody else thankful, certainly St. John is thankful. And if nobody in St. John was thankful, certainly Reverend Porsche is thankful. <laughs> we give honor, as always, to our Heavenly Father, who has allowed us to be here in his presence yet again. I want to thank Pastor Edwards for this opportunity to stand before you again. I want to give kudos to all of the youth that stand in service today. And to my brother, Noble, 
I, I regret, I regret asking him, because now I wondered what I'm going to preach. <laughs> it is good to be in the house of the Lord yet again. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord until I die. Oh, thank you, Lord. I will. Y'all sound good. Will. In. I will. In the Lord. And I am going to stay on. On the battlefield, I am going to stay on the battle. I am going to stay on the battlefield until I Look at your neighbor and shake somebody's hand and say, I am going to treat it. Everybody, Everybody right? John chapter 21. John chapter 21, verse 15. Until I die. John chapter 21. Would you meet me at the 15th verse? When you have it, say amen. And the Bible says, so when they had died, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, lovest thou me more than these? He said to him, yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He said to, to him, Feed my lambs. He says to him again a second time, Simon, son of Joseph, Jonah, loveth thou me? He said to him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He said to him again, Feed my sheep. He saith unto him a third time, Simon, son of Joseph, Jonah, 
lovest thou me? Peter was grieved because he said unto him the third time, lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things. Thou knowest that I love thee. And Jesus said unto him, feed my sheep. Today, I just want to piggyback a little bit upon what Dad talked about last week. fascinating character in the Bible, besides Jesus, is Simon Peter. He's so interesting because he's so much like myself. He means well, but somehow he just can't get right. He's good intentions, but at times he's just outright foolish. He overcompensates in passion, but he is found lacking in prudence. He usually puts his foot in his mouth before he puts his brain in gear. But to his credit, several occasions, he happened to be on point among his lessons. Jesus asked his disciples, who do men say that I am? And they answered and said, some say that you are John the Baptist, some say that you are Elijah, some say that you are Jeremiah and other prophets. And then Jesus asked, he said, who do you say that I am? Peter boldly made that bold confession and said, I know who you are. Thou art the Christ, son of the living God. And not long after that, Jesus took his inner circle up on a mountain and had a private powwow with Peter, James, and John and was transfigured unto them along with Moses and Elijah. And Peter, who had just made that bold statement, put his foot in his mouth and said, let's not go back down there. Let's build three tabernacles. One to Moses, one to Elijah, and one to Peter, one to Jesus. One time, Jesus was explaining to his disciples how he would suffer and die at the hands of the Pharisees because it was the will of God to save man. And Peter, meaning well and being full of passion, pulled Jesus aside and said, be it far from you, Lord. This will not happen to you. Jesus had to check him and say, get behind me, Satan, because you're not mindful of the things of God. One day, one evening, one night, the disciples were on the Sea of Galilee on their way to Capernaum, and a storm arose. And Jesus comes walking to his disciples on the fourth watch of the night. And everybody was afraid. But Peter, in the midst of a storming sea and driving rains and raging winds, had the courage to say, Lord, if it's really you, bid me to walk on the water with you. And Peter, the 
achieved something that no other person in human history besides Jesus ever did. Peter actually, literally walked on water. But in that same incident, he took his eye off of Jesus and began to sink. But he had the good sense to say, Lord, save me. One night, Jesus was in the upper room with his disciples, and after supper, he had taken a towel and girded himself, washed his disciples' feet. And Peter, recognizing the holiness of the master and having good intentions, said, Lord, you won't wash my feet. Instead of watching and listening, Jesus had to check him again and say, Peter, if I don't wash you, you'll have no place with me. But Peter again, talking before he understands, said, in that case, wash my hands, wash my feet and my head. And Jesus had to tell him again, Peter, You've already had a bath. I just need to tidy you up every now and then. It was Peter who was bold enough and said, Lord, I'll go with you to jail. I'll go with you to death. If everybody else leaves you, I'll go with you. Jesus said, Peter, I know you mean that. But before the rooster crows, you will have denied me three times. The story goes on that those, those soldiers come to arrest Jesus. Peter might have run his mouth too much, but at least he was willing to back it up. Because Peter meant what he said. He pulled out his sword, cut that soldier's ear off. And let's be real, who has a sword fight and aims for the ear? Actually, he was aiming for the neck and missed. Peter was ready to cut somebody's head off over Jesus. He meant what he said. Jesus picked that man's ear off up and put it back on his head and said, Peter, if you live by the sword, you'll die by the sword. The story goes a little further that the they arrest Jesus, and they take him to the courtyard of Caiaphas. And Peter follows from afar off. And at the gates, he starts to warm his hands at Caiaphas's fire. The fire is brighter. Peter's face is illumined around the fire, and somebody recognizes him. And for the first time, he says, you're one of them. For the first time, Peter says, I don't know who you're talking about. The fire gets even brighter. Peter's face is even more illumined, and somebody else recognizes and says, oh, yeah, you're one of them. Peter says, hey, bro, I already told you. I don't know what you're talking about. Peter's blood pressure is elevated. His palms are sweating. His temples are pounding because he's about to be who he really is. And then a little girl, a little girl comes and says, oh, yeah, you're one of them. And Peter said, God, cussing and spitting, don't say that anymore. And the Bible says immediately the rooster crows. And Peter went out and wept bitterly because of his sin. Because I've learned that you can disappoint yourself sometimes to the point of the debilitating emotion of grief. Paul speaks to me when he says that the good that I would do that I do not. And the evil that I don't even want to do, well, that's where I, what I find myself 
do. Peter couldn't even believe that of himself because you don't know what you'll do in any situation until you're put on that certain circumstance. And reality has a way of humbling us, doesn't it? And Peter, in his failure, went out and wept bitterly. As the great football coach John Madden says, that success breeds confidence. But if success breeds confidence, then failure encourages cowardice. And Peter had went out and wept bitterly. He was done. He was through. He had disqualified himself forever. Jesus is now crucified on the cross. They take him down and they place him in Joseph of Arimathea's brand new tomb. They, they place him in Joseph's new tomb because he's just borrowing it for the weekend. Because he stayed there all night Friday and stayed there all day Saturday. Stayed there all night Saturday night. But early Sunday morning, he got up with all power in his hands. The women that came to attend his body found an empty grave. Jesus told Mag Mary Magdalene, go tell my disciples and Peter to meet me in Galilee. Peter had done all that he could to disqualify himself forever, but thank God, through his grace, Jesus had given him another chance. Jesus, Peter runs and finds the empty grave, and Jesus appears to them walking through the wall, the door being shut. The, 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 the disciples are in the room trembling for their lives for fear of the Jews. Jesus walks in unto them, leaves again, comes back to address Thomas, and now Peter doesn't know what to think. Peter is all discombobulated because he's had a rough couple of weeks. And doubt has now taken over Peter's mind. And I'm reminded of the bumper sticker that I saw when I was a child that said, when in doubt, go fishing. And perhaps Peter coined that phrase because he looks at his buddies, chapter 20, and says, I'm going fishing. I'm going fishing. Because we have, because when doubt comes in our mind, when this faith walk gets hard, we have a tendency to go back to what we know. I know you learn to turn the other cheek in Sunday school, but when the pressure is on you, we got the tendency to go back to what we know. When the pressures of life start weighing on you, we have the tendency to go right back to what we've always done. And the pressures were on Peter, and he says to his buddies, I'm, I'm going fishing. Not only does Peter have a cursing problem, not only does Peter have a loyalty problem, but he's got a backsliding problem. Because this is not the first time that Peter has gone back to fishing. This is now the fourth time that Jesus has had to call Peter out of the fishing boat. But thank God for his grace and giving him a chance over and over and over again. Peter goes fishing and finds Jesus at Galilee exactly where he, what he, where he said he would be. And, I, and he calls to them and says to them, you've gone back to the old way of life. Have you caught anything? 
gone back to what you know, where has that gotten you? Went back to your old way of thinking, your old way of doing things, what has it gotten you? Have you gotten any meat? Jesus tells them to cast their boat on the right, their net on the right side of the boat, and now they are reminded of Luke chapter 5, where Jesus had, where they had pulled in a multitude of fishes for following the word of God. But then, and I'm almost done, then Jesus has a one-on-one -on -one conversation with Peter. He says to Peter, Peter, do you love me more than these? He asked Peter the question, do you love me more than these? But I need you to lean in because he's not just simply asking Peter about his affections toward him. The word he uses is the word agape the love that prioritizes one's, another one's will, another one's interest, another one's desires over your own. And he asked Peter, do you prioritize me over these? Because it is that, that within, a, that discipleship requires that Christ takes superlative position in your life. He asked Peter, Peter, do you love me? Do you agape me over these? But Jesus doesn't ask questions to be informed. I got a feeling that Jesus already knew what Peter was thinking. He asks Peter, he's not asking Peter about his affections, but he ask, he's asking Peter for self-evaluation. He says, Peter, examine yourself. Do you love me? Do you, where is your priorities, Peter? Do you love me more than these? And that is the question that Christ is asking us today. Do you, do you love him more than these? To which Peter answers and says, Lord, I phileo you. Jesus asked about agape. But Peter says, phileo. And we've never seen Peter like this before. We're used to Peter saying, Lord, I'll go with you to death. I'll go with you to jail. But we've never seen him like this. We're used to him saying, Lord, if everybody else leaves you, I'll go with you. But we've never seen him like this. We're used to him saying, Lord, if it's really you, just tell me so and I'll walk on the water with you. But we're not used to seeing Peter like this because it is that self-evaluation and self-examination will make you think before you speak. And you won't be so quick to talk about what you're going to do. And now Peter is not so sure of himself. He's no longer claiming to love Jesus as much as Jesus loves him. He says, Lord, I, I phileo you. Do, Peter, do you love me more than these? These, these, such an ambiguous pronoun, isn't it, given this situation? Because there are several things at this, in this context. Could he have been talking about 
the other disciples, Peter, do you love me more than these other men? After all, these men had spent three years of their lives together. They had been through a lot together. And after all, one of them was his actual blood brother. And now they have formed the bond that can, might as well have been closer than any blood bond. And so Jesus has, could have been asking them, Peter, do you love me more than you love these men? Because discipleship requires that Jesus take a superlative position over all of your relationships. That sometimes we'll have to part ways with relationships that are out of the path of God's call on your life. God is calling on us to evaluate, do you love me more than you love your relationship? Do you love me more than these? What, what, what could have he been talking about when he said, do you love me more than these? Could he been saying, Peter, do you love me more than the other disciples love me? After all, it was Peter who said in the upper room, Lord, nobody's going to take you by force. I'll go with you. If, if everybody else leaves you, I'll be with you. If all of these other losers desert you, I'll go with you. It was Peter who said all of these things. And now Jesus is asking him, Peter, do you still say that you love me more than those guys? after you've been through what you've been through and after reality has set in and you have evaluated your own faith, are you still quick to put your foot in your mouth and talk about who you love, that you love me more than them? Because this Christian walk has nothing to do with your spiritual superiority over your neighbor. That holiness is not on a grading curve where you compare your holiness to your righteousness. That Christ, that Christ uh, requires complete devotion with you, with him, and that has nothing to do with your neighbor. That every man must work out his own salvation with fear and trembling. Peter, do you love me? You still say you love me more than these guys love me? But rather, I think Peter was talking about, Jesus said, he was talking about when he said, do you love me more than these? He was talking about the fish. Peter, do you love me more than these fish? After all, it was what Peter knew. After all, it was Peter's profession. After all, it was Peter's formerly, former livelihood. Yeah. And after all, every time things got hard for Peter, he did have a tendency to go right back to them. Yeah. Peter, do you love me more than you love these fish? Not, and not just that he was asking Peter, do you love me more than one individual fish? Peter, do you love me more than you love your lifestyle? Peter, do you love me more than you love the things that you're able to have and the, the things that you're able to enjoy? Do you love me more than your lifestyle? Do you love me enough to totally change your lifestyle to follow me? Because the call of Christ is going to call you to make some changes in your life. The old folk used to put it like this. Things that I used to do, I don't do no more. Things that I used to say, I don't say no more. And places I used to go, I don't say no more. Because discipleship requires a total transformation. And your lifestyle will change. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. And that old stuff has passed away. And behold, everything has become new. Peter, do you love me more than you love your lifestyle? Oh, I can testify about it. I've been through it recently. That's why I can talk. 
Discipleship, if you're going to follow Christ, it's going to cost you your lifestyle. Peter, do you love me more than these? And Peter says, I phileo you. Peter has examined himself. And now he has dealt with the reality that maybe he doesn't love Jesus as much as Jesus loves him. Peter has examined himself, and now he's, he's humbled himself, and now he realizes that he can't claim a superior love for God over anybody else. Peter says, I phileo you. And then Jesus gives the call. He says, feed my lamb. Jesus asked him a second time, Peter, do you love me? Do you agape me? Because Christ deserves agape. But Peter answers for the second time and says, Lord, I phileo you. But Jesus has a change of language himself. Peter says for the first two, Jesus asked him for the first two times and said, Peter, do you agape me? But for the third time, he says to Peter, do you phileo me? Because it was that Peter had, did not have the capacity to love Jesus with agape, but he gave Jesus what he got, and Jesus will work with what you give him. That even though Peter didn't have agape, he had phileo, and Jesus was willing to work with Peter even with his phileo. And that's what God wants to do with you. You're not what, he, what he's trying to make you, but he'll take you as you are and work with what you give him. He says, Peter, do you phileo me? Peter says, he says, Lord, you know. Then he says, feed my lambs, that Jesus is still willing to work with Peter even though his faith is not where it should be. But then Peter says something interesting because self-evaluation can work wonders for somebody. And he says, Lord, you know, because obviously Peter doesn't even know himself. Peter couldn't believe the news of, that he would ever betray Jesus. And now Peter is at the point where he's humble and he just has the answer, Lord, you know. David comes to mind and he says, thou knowest my friend and knoweth that we were just dust. Peter didn't disappoint Jesus when he betrayed him that day. Disappointment comes when you expect something higher and got something less. David says that he knoweth our frame and knows that we are just dust. Notice he doesn't say dirt. Notice he says that we are just dust. That flimsy stuff that just gets blown around with every breeze. That unstable matter that just floats around and takes forever to get settled. Dust. That unstable stuff that just moves to and fro with no substance to it. 
dust. He knoweth our frame and knows we are just dust. Peter didn't disappoint Jesus because he knows what he's working with. But Peter still gives, Jesus still gives the answer and says, feed my lambs. Aren't you glad to know that even though he knows who you are, that he's still willing to work with you after knowing everything about you, he's still willing to work with you. Aren't you glad to know that you didn't disappoint Jesus when you backslid? He knew exactly what he was working with, and yet the door is still open to come to him. Aren't you glad to know that God in his grace, even though he knows everything about you, even though you can't give him the love that he deserves, even though your righteousness is of filthy rags, he's still willing to work with you if you come to him. Because after he says, feed my lambs, he gives Peter the direct. Follow me. If you're here today, if you're here today, God is calling you to follow him. Regardless of what you've done, regardless of who you are, regardless of the shape that you're in, he's still willing to work with you. No matter how drug addicted you are, no matter how broke you are, he's still willing to work with you. No matter what state that you're in right now, where you sit, he wants to work with you. If you just follow him, you didn't disappoint him. He already knew what he was working with. He already knew that you would do what you would do before you did it. He knew that you would say the things that you would say before he, he already knew what he was working with. Will you come with him? You can't, you can't clean yourself up. You can't make yourself right. You can't change yourself before you come. How in the world do you think that you would ever change yourself up without him? Jesus gives the call. Follow me. The door of God's church. open to you. Maybe you've done a lot of things in your life and you're ashamed. No need to be ashamed. He's already worked it out. your hands for long enough and now you're ready to take the call of discipleship the door of God's church is open to you today maybe you've already made Jesus the Lord of your life and now you just need somebody to pray with you that's all right. Come to Jesus. The door of God's church is open to you.
You've been waiting too long to follow him. You've been waiting too long to give him your life. Won't you come to him now? His, arm, his arms are open right now. Come to Jesus. done as you have commanded and yet there is room Psalmist said, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Do you see what the Lord just did? Let the church say. Let the people of God rejoice. Amen. This is Willie Simmons, and this is your St. John Today. Are you struggling to keep up with the ever-changing world of technology? Look no further. Our second Tech Saturday event is coming up on April 20th at 9 a.m. Join us for a morning of learning to get hands-on help with your phone, computer, or all favorite social media platforms. Don't miss out on this opportunity to live up your tech skills. Good morning, St. John. Pastor Dennis here again with a couple of announcements for you this Sunday. Number one, did y'all enjoy the Easter program? Aren't you proud of our kids? Well, video copies of the program will be available for all the parents who had kids participate. So to order your copy, contact the media department at 501 Four four two nine five six four. And number two, people have been asking. I've been telling folks it's coming, and now it's time. Town Hall 2 is coming May 15th. Save the date. Last time, we talked about broad general ideas. This time, we want to narrow the lens and talk about what's been done, what's in the works, and what we'd like to do for the remainder of the year. So again, save the date. 
6 p.m. May 15th in the Fellowship Hall. Town Hall 2 will be happening. And registration will be available as early as next Sunday. Well, that's all I got for now. Bless y'all and see you soon. Good morning, St. John. This is a message for all youth. Blast is back up and running every Wednesday starting at 545. And this Wednesday, April 17th, we're having a welcome back pizza party to say welcome back to Bible study. You don't want to miss it. I'll see you there. Attention all expiring Christian leaders. Registration for the Christian Leadership Institute is now open. Don't miss this opportunity to learn from the experienced instructor, Reverend Alan Hunter, as he guides you through the basic teachings of the Baptist faith. This course is perfect for those looking to deepen their understanding of doctrine and strengthen their leadership skills. Register now from April 11th through May 9th at sjmbchurch.org. Attention all members of St. John, who are excited to announce that our small group study sessions are in session. These sessions will be held in the education building on the third floor. Sign-in sheets will be available in the vegetable area Sunday, so be sure to stop before or after morning's worship service to sign up. This is a great opportunity to deepen your faith and grow towards discipleship. There are four ways to give your tithes and offerings by mail, via the Giveify app, or by bringing your envelope to the office during the week. We also can give on the church website. To get more details on everything happening in St. John, check your emails, text alerts, as well as visit our church website at sjmbchurch.org. And this concludes our April church highlights. We'll help you enjoy today's worship service. Until next time, be blessed and have a great week. Well, it's hard to follow that. We can only say just remember every one of the announcements that have been made today, and uh, we want you to be able to respond in time, in kind. Uh, on this Wednesday, our chronic illness uh, ministry, support, chronic illness support ministry, um, we have many people who are dealing with things that just won't go away. We have to learn to live with them. Is not a death sentence to us. It's just a way that we just make adjustments and keep on living. And so the chronic illness, wellness, uh, chronic illness support ministry will be meeting this Wednesday at 5.30 to 6.15 6 p.m. So before we begin press, there is this vital ministry that is available to those who are dealing with things that they can, won't go away, but you just learn to live with them. Some of us are living with heart conditions, and some of us are living with um, cancer. Some of us are living with a, just a myriad of things, illnesses. I think um, we, uh, I think Pastor Edward said something about that this morning. These, no, that was Reverend Noble about our bodies uh, they, they just, things happen with these bodies, don't they? <laughs> Amen. All of us who are young now, we'll be like these older people later on. <laughs> we have to learn to watch them and see how they're doing. So when we get there, we'll know how to, how to handle it. Uh, chronic illnesses, people are dealing with that all the time. But you are not alone. There are others who have conditions that when you think that your, your situation is bad, you need to be around others so you can see what real suffering is. Because as bad as you think your situation is, there's somebody else dealing with something much more serious than you. And you notice that some of them that have, you, you wouldn't even know the, the depth of their suffering by the way they look. They just keep on going, they keep on smiling, and while you have been grumpy and withdrawn and all of that, you see how other people are learning to live victoriously in spite of what they're going through. And so the, this support group is good for you this Wednesday, 6.15. And sometimes, you know, we're so secretive. We don't 
want anybody to know. You, know, you have it, but it doesn't have to have you. And that's the reason the support group is around, to help you to manage with the things that you have to go through. So please, this Wednesday, 615, if that's you, notice what has been mentioned already, meet in the, on that Paracletus room is what floor? Is that the second floor? Second floor. Do you know that number? You, you know the number? Yeah. Right. Right. You, you, you know the room number. Okay. Just look, just look for a Paracletus room on the third floor. That's the reason that with young people, their attention span is... <laughs> it's not so long, so y'all just, we, we just don't keep things like the older ones. Did I say 615? All right, 5.30, 5.30. Now what time, is, like one of my deacons said, what, what time at 5.30 are you supposed to be there? Amen. God bless. Now, um, and we're taking a little time this morning. Please forgive us. Um, we have, uh, on last Sunday, we, uh, and, and you'll still find forms out front. Uh, and some of you that took some last week, there's a box out front for, we are at this point asking for recommendations from our congregation of men that can serve as deacons the qualifications for a deacon, the biblical qualifications are on that form. And if you know someone that you feel meets these qualifications that you feel can, you can recommend, we want you to write their name on those forms that are out front. And it is also a box or a basket there that has a name, that has a, a sign on it. Those are where you deposit it. Don't put your name on there. Put the name of the person that you feel that uh, meets these qualifications and that you believe would be a good recommendation for our church family. Would you do that? Amen. Now, uh, on next Sunday, uh, we note that this whole month is celebration of our Bread of Life bookstore. Bread of life, bread of life. That title is there because Jesus is the bread of life. And that's where you buy materials, books, that are about him that will enable you to be stronger in your Christian life. Bread of life bookstore celebrating 30 years of operation. That's 30 years of total volunteers working in the bookstore to provide us with materials, with robes, and with books, and other, uh, inf in other things that are necessary for us to grow, cards, uh, Christmas cards, birthday cards, uh, of all kinds. You just find it if it's in a, in a bookstore, then the Bread of Life has it in its bookstore. 30 years on the first level of the educational building, you'll find the Bread of Life bookstore. When you come in that entrance, there it is, the awning with it on the title announcement, since you may not have visited before. Come by the Bread of Life bookstore and let's celebrate them all of this week, of all this month, uh, and then use it all of the year. <laughs> Amen. On next Sunday, um, the 
in conjunction with that, there will be the release of my new book called Pick it, Like Picking Up Paw Paws, uh, Gathering Fruit, Gathering Inspiration from Different Patches of Life. They matter. So after service on next Sunday, we'll be able to uh, give you an autographed copy uh, <laughs> as we'll be looking forward to signing on next Sunday. God bless. Now, before we do that, before we get back to our youth pastor, all of those who are worshiping with us today as guests, we are just so happy that you are here and you helped to make this worship experience what it has been just by you being here. And we hope that while you were here, that you receive something that will last the rest of your life, that will be encouraging and inspirational. If you are a guest here today, we're not gonna ask you to speak and call out your name and all of that. We just wanna recognize your presence. Would you please stand and let us see you here today? All of our guests, would you stand today? Amen. Thank you for standing. Amen. Are there any others throughout our building? Would you please stand? And we'd like to share a card with you. And if you would not mind, uh, share uh, writing information. There was something I missed in the back. Just to thank the Lord for all of you. You were just a blessing for you to be here today. And uh, we want you to take away from here our love and also a great welcome to come back just as soon as you can and worship with us. You can study with us on Wednesday night. The, all of the children, the youth, blast this Wednesday night, 5.30, 5.45 begins when the kids will be able to eat before they go to study. 5.45, bring them this Wednesday. Now, um, we had some who were a little, um, a little older than the kids last week at feeding time. Uh, well, we, we, that's all right. That's all right. Just be here. Amen. And all of the kids, be sure that they're here at 545. And then they'll start their study at 6.15. Uh, I believe that's it. All right. Now, um, one more thing before I take my seat. No, I can't remember what it Say again, uh, please make sure that um, you bring your children to blast. And while you bring them, you might as well stay for press night yourself um, and help us grow together. Uh, Sister Walza, is there anything that I need to say? Sister Walls keeps me on point. Um, he asked me to emphasize press. He didn't hear me just do it, did he? <laughs> I gave a boost to blast. He's going to give me one or two words about press. <laughs> we have facilitated courses. You can pick up your information outside the office of the material that is being used. We have some fantastic facilitators. And last week was a great, great start to, to press on Wednesday night. Join us this Wednesday night. Bring somebody else along with you. Sign up for it so that we can know how many people that we are having in each of our sessions. And then if there needs to be another one opened up, we can do that. By all means, do that. Do join us this 
Wednesday night. All right, amen. Um, please note all youth that have assignments, uh, Sister Edwards and I will be absent for the next two Sundays. Uh, we'll be traveling back home to Oakland next Sunday, and then the Sunday after that, uh, I'll be preaching at Mount Olive in North Little Rock. So everybody, please be on your assignments. I know that you will. Um, and Sister Keisha has any, um, go to her for any more further questions. Now, Now may the grace of God, sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide with each of us now, henceforth, and forevermore. And all the children of God said, Amen. Amen.